Hey everyone, okay, so today I'm gonna to be giving you my thoughts on the new product from Charlotte Tilbury, and this is the Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. Here it is. Now this is the travel size version. I got an email asking me if I would like to purchase this early, which of course I did. So I bought two, and here they are. So, as with all setting sprays, they claim to set the makeup. Now the majority of setting sprays on the market do not set makeup, they, re they remove a powder residue which looks much better, but they don't set. There are a few exceptions on the market and I've already done videos on incredible ones. This is a priming and a setting spray in one. It's a spray primer and a setting spray. And when used in those two combinations, you will get an incredible lock on your makeup. Now I'm gonna show you a demonstration of this, but it's not all roses, but let's see the demonstration. I'm gonna spritz the hand with it to prime it. Then I'm gonna apply just two eyeshadow colors and then I'm gonna set it with the spray again, and we're gonna leave it for, I don't know, I think I left it for just over three minutes. And what you will see here, and this is the fun part, is that this really does set the makeup that's applied to it. It really, really, really does. Now, on a professional level, it does what it says on the tin. It's extraordinary. It probably is up there with the Huda uh, resting bitch, is it resting boss face? Resting bitch face? What is it? Should I have a look? Resting boss face, stupid boy. Um, it's up there with that, which means that it really can set the makeup. And as you saw in that demonstration, it really doesn't move. So from a professional point of view, it does what it says on the tin. From a personal point of view, it's not for me. And the same as the Huda one, which is incredible, and it does what it says on the tin, it's not for me, because they smell, they stink, they smell horrid. There is, in my opinion, never a need to add this amount of fragrance to a product. It stinks. Now, I'm very, very sensitive to fragrance, so Magic Cream doesn't bother me in the slightest. This bothers me. This, Huda, this bothers me. It is enough to cause me to have a headache very, very quickly. And it's one of those headaches that I get from fragrances that lingers on and on and on. It makes me want to jump in the shower and just start scrubbing away at my body while screaming in the shower. This does that to me. If it did not have scent, this would probably be one of the finest setting sprays on the market. Now for most people and a lot of people, they aren't going to care about the smell of it. And it isn't a horrific smell. It is an overly fragrant, floral, artificial scent. That's it. Some, uh, some people are gonna go, well, nothing. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. And it probably won't. But for somebody that's very sensitive to fragrance like me, like the only, there's like three fragrances that I can use personally on myself that do not cause me to get horrific headaches. This is not that product for me. It's not gonna be something I would use personally, which is a shame because I really would use this. Now, as with all setting sprays, this one included, they leave a shiny finish on the skin. They all do. I, it's probably something to do with the um, film um, agent that they use in it. They're kind of like hairspray that holds, but it gives a shine. It's very similar to this. It does give the makeup a slightly more shiny finish, but most people aren't really gonna care about that. And of course you can go over it, the areas, say the T-zone and just blot them out. It's an incredible product. It really, really does work. It just smells and I can't use it myself, which is a pisser. Links are down there in the description bar. Let me know what you think. I mean, it does work. It's not for me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye. See, people say to me that I get a lot of hate for liking Charlotte Tilbury products. Now, I was buying Tom Ford predominantly before Charlotte Tilbury. And during the process of buying Tom Ford, I found out that Charlotte Tilbury had made the Tom Ford products. She was behind the whole line, right? So it's no surprise that I moved from Tom Ford to Charlotte Tilbury because you're kind of getting the same thing, except Charlotte then moved from Tom Ford and created her own line and stuck with her own line. So it's no surprise that I like the majority of the products because they are very similar and updated versions of the Tom Ford ones. And I get a lot of hate for liking Charlotte Tilbury products. And you know what I'm like, right? If you don't like it, you don't have to view it. You don't have to leave a nasty comment either because it says more about you than it does about me liking something. But I get a lot of hate for Charlotte Tilbury products. Now, generally speaking, I like the majority of them and I truly do. I also buy all of them myself. 
but, and there is a but, there are a couple of products that I did not really, really care for. And both of them, and it's only two actually, but both of them had a problem, actually there's three, but the two had the same problem, the setting spray and the loose powder. The loose powder looks beautiful on the skin, but it stinks, it smells really bad, it smells like it's gone off, it's a horrible smell. And I mentioned it straight away, I even emailed them because um, I have like a, um, a person that I know there. So I emailed them and said, what is up with this product? And same with this, it smells. They're two products that I really like and would use on other people if they didn't have issues with sensitivity to fragrance, but they're not for me. I also really liked the, um, the her new concealer, the Flawless Airbrush. Darling, it's magical, it's so good, it will change your life concealer really good, but I hate the sponge tip applicator. I think it's filthy, I think it's dirty, I think it's disgusting, I don't like it. But the product is good. But I generally like more than I will ever dislike. And I also have a bias towards Charlotte Tilbury. There's no doubt, there's no point pretending that I do. And a lot of people, some people will know this and some people won't, but way back in the day, this was and I think her, this was either before her launch or just slightly, I think it was just slightly after. But I had reached out to Charlotte Tilbury before the launch, way before the launch, and asked her if I could pay to be taught her method, how she does makeup. Because I really wanted to learn how she does makeup. And she emailed me back and she was like, absolutely. And we set this time of day. Now I was prepared to pay for the entire day to sit down with her, watch her do all her stuff. She didn't, what's that noise? Where's oh, my phone? Oh, it's work, one sec. Hey guy. <laughs> okay. Groovy. All right, mate, thank you. Bye, bye, bye. Oh, guy. Anyway, so what I was saying was um, that, yeah, I had uh, was gonna pay for this whole thing to be done. And bear in mind that this is, you're talking nine years ago, right? Perhaps eight years ago, something like that. And there was, um, I didn't have a huge number of subscribers, anything like that. And she took no payment. She allowed me to sit there and record the entire work that she was doing and go through everything with a fine tooth comb. And so yes, I have an absolute bias towards Charlotte Tilbury, 100%. I do not pretend I do not, I do not pretend otherwise, I very much do. And I've always been incredibly grateful um, for that experience and just the, her, if you meet her in person, you will understand she's exactly like you see on the screen, a little bit more sweary, but exactly like you see on the screen, incredibly nice, very friendly, everything is fabulous. And she's a very good person and I have a bias and I don't mind that whatsoever. So there you go. Thanks for watching and I will see you all soon, bye-bye.